I want to run you through two examples, two examples what you can, might come across in real life to make absolutely sure that once you start shopping for your modules, for your panels, that you'll be able to distinguish between the efficiency of a cell and the efficiency of a module. Because please keep in mind, there's no good or bad, there's no wrong or right between using either way the cell or the module efficiency, right? Some manufacturers will prefer the cell efficiency versus the module efficiency. It doesn't matter which one you are using, but it is really important. I find it really important that you know, once you find the value of efficiency, that you know, okay, they are talking about the cell efficiency or the module efficiency. So let's look at two different examples. And the first one, we'll look at an example of a manufacturer that's using the module efficiency. And the second one, the manufacturer that's using the value of cell efficiency. So remember that module efficiency refers to the ratio of electrical output of the solar cell versus the total amount of irradiation, the total amount of solar power that's hitting the surface area of the solar cell. So for this exercise, I want to go to the website of SunPower. I am not affiliated with SunPower uh, and I'm going to their section on products, solar panels, and then there will be a few to choose from. So let's just, it doesn't matter which one we, we take. So let's go for the A series solar panels. And I've already downloaded here a specification sheet of just one of their uh, solar modules, doesn't matter. So this is a residential AC module the range of 390 to 420 watts. Now there's a lot of in interesting information here on the first page, but we are looking for the value of the efficiency of the module. And then we want to see whether mm. this manufacturer uses the value of cell efficiency versus module efficiency. So here we get to the second page, electrical data, DC power data. And there you are right away. This is really clear open and clear out there, it's the module efficiency. So the unit that SunPower is using for this module is the module efficiency. Now you can see that uh, there's different ranges. It ranges from 20.9 up to 22.5, which is interesting because you can see at the bottom right that the, the sizes of the panel are, are all the same, right? So the reason why there's different models with different outputs is because what they do, they manufacture these modules and then they test them very properly and then they'll see okay this panel gives a little bit more this you know there's always a little bit of variation in between the modules and then they just sell the modules by telling you exactly well this is the efficiency of this specific module all right let him shut up for a second i just want to explain to you that the content of this video is copied from the complete course of energy systems if this information is enough for you, great. If you want to learn more and if you want to get access to the complete course, then check the information in the description below. All right, you go out again. Um, so, you know, this is a very easy and straightforward way. They'll sell you a module and they'll tell you this is the efficiency of the complete module. Um, and just for fun, if you would want to calculate the value yourself, if you want to double check it, you can see here note number five. So it's tested on the SDC, under standard test conditions, 1000 watts per square meters, right? This is the value that we discussed before as well. You've got the sizes here. So between the brackets, that's in millimeters. So what you would do is you would take the sizes of the module, so 1.835 meters, multiply it by 1.016 meters, and then you're getting the total surface area of the module, which is 1.86436 square meters and then we know that this module is being tested under SDC test conditions so 1000 watts per square meters which means if the surface area of the module is 1.86 square meters um, the total amount of solar radiation that is being applied to the module is 1863 watts in total that's the solar radiation and then let's take this module where they claim the maximum performance output of 400 and 20 watts. Um, so you take the 420 watts of electrical output, you divide it by the total amount of solar power hitting the panel, so 1863 watt of solar power, which gives you a value of 22.53%. And this is exactly what they indicated, because they're saying that this module, with the output of 420 watts, has a module efficiency of 22.5%. So in my opinion, this data sheet is very clear, it's very exact, it's very transparent, and it's giving you exactly the information that you're looking for. 
now let's look at another example where the manufacturer wouldn't use the uh, unit of module efficiency but that of cell efficiency and as we're doing this exercise remember so the formula for calculating the efficiency per cell is the total amount of power output from the cell compared to the surface area of the solar cell itself not the module of the cell so for this exercise let's go to the manufacturer Solbian Solbian.com I am not affiliated with Solbian um, let's go straight to the bottom of the website and here in product section let's select one of their panels um, doesn't matter let's go for the SP series um, by the way these panels in my opinion I really like them because they have for flexible panels they have one of the highest efficiencies that you can get at the market at the moment and their overall quality is, is really good that's just my opinion uh, so let's download the data sheet of the SP series okay so here at the first page there's a lot of information you can already see here that they say uh, their monocrystalline line silicon cells reaching a record 24 percent conversion of sunlight into electricity so it doesn't say it exactly but based on these words i would expect that the the efficiency that they're using refers to the cell efficiency because in there because they're talking about the cells not about the module right so i think this is about cell efficiency so when we scroll down a little bit Here's all the technical information, which is really valuable. You can see at the bottom of the table that it's tested on the SDC, standard test conditions, 1000 watts per square meters. That's perfect. In the overview, it doesn't give, so here it doesn't say the, the efficiency, the module efficiency or the cell efficiency, whereas on the first page it says 24. Um, so what we're going to do, we're going to calculate it ourselves. So I'm, based on this, you can already expect that it's about the cell efficiency but let's take let's do the same what we did before so we're taking the values here of the the total size of the module so 1.49 meters times 0.546 meters and then we multiply it by the irradiance so 1000 watts per square meter so this module is receiving a total amount of solar power of 813 watts and then we see here in the an overview that this panel will provide you with 144 watt of electrical power so you divide it by the 813 watts that's actually being received by the solar module that gives us a value of well you multiply by 100 and then you get a value of 17.7 percent efficiency which means that the efficiency of this module 17.7 and then since the manufacturer would indicate an efficiency of 24 percent then the 24 percent refers to the cell efficiency now these values make a lot of sense and they're actually pretty good for flexible panels because flexible panels have a lot of inactive uh, surface area compared to rigid panels right so these values are really really good for in my opinion really good for flexible panels so there you go, now you understand the difference between uh, cell efficiencies and model efficiencies. You know how to recognize it and how it's being calculated and what the importance for you is, what it actually means, right? Now let's look at the next subchapter and dive into the topic of the crystalline solar panels. So each and every crystalline solar panel is made from...